Hello and thanks for joining us from our studios in Israel. I'm Aaron Porras here with ILTV's Morning Briefing. On the heels of the United Nations and American peace missions, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu is taking a stand and declaring that the state of Israel will never evacuate another Jewish settlement. At a ceremony marking the 50th anniversary of Israel settling in the West Bank, Netanyahu proclaimed, quote, we're here to stay forever, end quote. The settlement issue has been at the center of peace talks since the beginning and are a controversial point of debate. Citing Jewish heritage and security, Netanyahu's pledge cements the state's claim to the disputed land, while Palestinians believe that nearly half a million Jews living in them threaten any possibility of a future Palestinian state. In fact, the settlements are usually the central point of peace negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians, a question which has divided the international community. Just today, a group of Palestinian landowners and Israeli rights groups actually filed with the state to halt the construction of a new settlement, which was originally planned to service the families evacuated from the Amona outpost earlier this year. The Israeli government had actually doubled its budget recently to speed up the new settlement, but the new objection aims to bring things to a complete stop, claiming the government didn't obtain any permits to legalize the construction. First the media, then protesters, then members of the international community, and then even members of the White House have all criticized President Trump's comments following the events of Charlottesville. Well now, it's United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres' turn. Guterres is in Israel for a three-day visit, and following his tour of the Holocaust Memorial Museum Yad Vashem, he said, quote, One could think that the horror of the Holocaust would be enough for anti-Semitism to be buried, but no, it's alive and well, end quote. When prompted to respond to the neo-Nazi rally in Virginia in which a woman was killed in a vehicular ramming attack, Guterres, as well as most of those who have spoken critically of Trump, addressed Trump's apparent drawing of moral equivalence between the many sides. President Trump and his supporters argue that the president was misquoted, though, and that he in fact clearly condemned Nazi and other hateful ideologies before moving on to addressing the violence, quote, on many sides. Regardless, Guterres doesn't seem to be buying it, saying, quote, I think he went into this kind of political thing to please part of his electorate, but this is a matter of fundamental values." End quote. In related news, United States Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has just revealed some major overhauls in the State Department. Chief among them is the abolishment of many diplomatic positions, including the Special Envoy for the Iran Nuclear Agreement. The envoy will not exist in the same way, though. It will be moved to be under the authority of a different bureau. It will also have two available spots and $130,000 in funding. Organizations like the Anti-Defamation League lauded the decision to keep the anti-Semitism envoy, who is meant to travel the world dispelling anti-Semitic sentiments, as well as keep tabs on the growth of the hateful ideology. The total State Department cuts removed 36 positions and left only 30. 26 of the positions cut will be absorbed or integrated into remaining positions, nine will be completely gotten rid of, and one has been transferred to the Agency for International Development. The hope is that with less people but the same budget spread over fewer offices, the restructured State Department will be more efficient. I guess only time will tell if that's true. In the latest update regarding corruption investigations over a submarine deal with a German shipbuilder, it seems that state witness Miki Ganor has been moved to a safe house. Ganor and five others are all suspects in a story of bribery, fraud, tax evasion, and money laundering, but Ganor is now working with investigators in return for immunity. Netanyahu is not suspected of anything in this case, nor is he really involved, but he is expected to be summoned to testify on what he may have known at the time. Case 3000, as this case is called, revolves around reports that David Shimron, Ganol's former lawyer and cousin to Prime Minister Netanyahu, facilitated a deal with German submarine shipbuilder ThyssenKrupp, in which Mickey Ganol was set to receive $45 million in commission. Shimron was to get a 20% cut of that. Now that more and more of Ganol's alleged testimony is being released, though, it looks like indictments could be just over the horizon. With that in mind, it would make sense that police have been reportedly surveilling, guarding, and transporting Ganol to and from daily interrogation and their safe house. In a range of raids throughout the country overnight, police have arrested 22 suspected pedophiles. The 22 suspects are from a larger group of 31 that the police have taken an interest in, and according to a police statement, the detainees are suspected of indecent acts and sexual harassment against children on the internet. 
Cell phones, computers, and other potential evidence has been collected on all the 22 men, who range in age from 24 to 60. It's worth noting that many of the suspects have no criminal record, but police investigators are leaving no stone unturned. The police statement read, quote, We take a very serious view of any harm to minors or those who are helpless, and that includes crime in the virtual space, end quote. That's all for now. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you later with our main daily broadcast from Israel at 2 p.m. Eastern Time.